I'm here to talk about success. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it will just drift around. It will not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. So I was very fortunate that I stumbled onto my vision. Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going, that I'm going to become this bodybuilding champion. So it was just a question of how do you do it? I was so relieved because when you have a goal, when you have a vision, everything becomes easy. Because remember that in America, for instance, when you study, you will see the percentage of people that like their jobs. 74% hate their job in America. Now, there is not much different when you come to Europe. The majority of people don't like what they're doing because they're really not doing it because they didn't have a goal and they followed this goal. They just aimlessly drift around and then all of a sudden there's a job opening so they get that job because you have to work. But then when you work, it's a chore. It's work. It's not fun. So if you think about only a quarter of the people really enjoy what they're doing in life, that is unbelievable if you think about it. So I felt so blessed that I knew what I was doing. So people always ask me, when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard, five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face? The others are working out just as hard as you do, and they look sour in the face. Why is that? And they told people all the time, I said, because to me, I'm shooting for a goal. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision turn into reality. It worked. I mean, think about it. And at the end, I was just not visualizing just my exercise, but I was really lifting the trophy over my head. That's what I was thinking about. And with the age of 20, with the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You got to have a purpose. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. I remember when I want to be a bodybuilding champion, including my parents and everyone else around me, said this is impossible. Why don't you become a ski champion? That's what they do in Austria. Or a bicycle champion to do some track and field. You can't be a bodybuilding champion. That is exactly what I heard. And of course, I proved to the people that it can't be done. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. I'm a strong believer of what Nelson Mandela said, that everything is always impossible until someone does it. Well, I'm going to be the one, I said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. The same was also when I went into, not just in bodybuilding, they said, no, when I wanted to come to America, when I wanted to go to America, they said it's impossible. It's, there's no money that you have to fly even over there. You have no money when you go over there to live with. And what do you think? They're going to wait for you? They have plenty of big bodybuilders over there. It was all no, no, and it can't be done. It's impossible. And I looked back again and learned from what I learned in sports. 
in my case in bodybuilding it's all about the hard work that you put in I said to myself in bodybuilding I worked out five six hours a day I'm gonna do the same thing now for acting and of course I went to college to study English I studied the I studied voice accent removal acting classes and all of this stuff all day long I worked and I worked and I worked and within a short period of time I made one movie called Hercules in New York which of course went right into the toilet but it didn't discourage me I still had the same vision but I didn't listen to those losers I didn't listen to them at all because that's exactly the way it was in politics again when everyone said no, 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 and it can't be done. And I became governor of California and this is with everything like that. This is just the reality of it is, is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So this is a very important lesson for all of you. If I would have listened to the naysayers from bodybuilding to show business to, the, uh, to uh, politics, I would not be standing here today talking to you I will be in Austria in the Alps yodeling so this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers and the next thing the third point that I'm gonna make to you is work your ass off there is no magic bill there is no magic out there you cannot get around you have to work and work and work and it drives me crazy when people say that they don't have enough time to go to the gym for 45 minutes a day and work out or to do something for 45 minutes to an hour a day to improve if it is physically improve or if it is mentally to improve imagine you read one hour a day about history how much you will learn after 365 hours in one year think about if you study about the history of musicians, of composers, how much you would know. Imagine if you would work on the business, on some business that you want to develop every day for an hour. Imagine how further along you will go and get. So it drives me nuts because we have, when people say we don't have the time, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day. So it gives you still 18 hours. Now there's someone shaking their head out here in front to say probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? Or just sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day. The average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours. So we have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. So what do you do with the six hours? What do you do with the six hours? Then we eat a little bit, then we schmooze a little bit, talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something. When I went to America, I went to college. I went and worked out five hours a day and I was working on construction because in those days in bodybuilding there was no money we didn't I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything so I had to go to work so I worked on construction I went to college I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight I went to acting class four times a week so I did all of that there was not one single minute that I wasted and this is why I'm standing here today I became very friendly with Muhammad Ali in the 70s and Muhammad Ali worked his butt off and I saw it firsthand and I remember that there was a sports rider that was there in the gym when he was working out and he was doing sit-ups and they asked him how many sit-ups do you do and he said I don't start counting until it hurts. Now think about that. He doesn't start counting his sit-ups until he feels pain. 
that's when he starts counting. That is working hard. And so you can't get around the hard work. It doesn't matter who it is. As a matter of fact, I believe what uh, Ted Turner said, work like hell and advertise. You get it? Work like hell, go to bed, and early, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. So you work your ass off, and then you let the world know about your work. That's what it is all about. Let people know if you have a company, if you have a movie, if you do a sports, work your ass off, but then advertise and let everyone know.